So again, hello everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce today's speaker, uh, Ellen, Ellen Santana from my CMC. Uh, Ellen were, uh, was uh, a PhD student here at SMC. Now she has a postdoc position here. Uh, Ellen, today Ellen is talking about the geometrical information encoded by the Euler obstruction of a map. Uh, thank you very much, Ellen, for accepting our invitation. And please, when it's okay for you, you can you may start. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Igor. It's so nice to to present to you about my work. So I thank you for the invitation. Um, so today I'm talking about the geometrical information encoded by the Euler obstruction of a map. This is a joint work with Nivaldo Grulli and Camila Ruiz. And uh, I think we are going to have a good time together. So let me start. I want to, let me see. So I want to describe for you first uh, the setting I'm working on. So we are taking an a witness stratification for this space. And then I'm going to show you this in the last, the last lectures I've, I gave, I, I skip this part of the construction behind the, the definition of the local obstruction, but this construction is important in, in another setting that I'm going to describe in the middle of the, my presentation. So I think today I'm going to, to go on on this construction. So what we do to define the Nash modification is that, okay, if we have a singular space, it is, we know that we cannot uh, compute the tangent space on a singular point, right? So this is true. So in order to uh, define or understand a type of tangency in a singular space, what we do is, what we can do is to define the Nash modification. So we take, uh this map that uh, takes each regular point in this pair of the regular point and the tangent space at that point of the regular part of our space and then if we have a sequence of regular points converging to a point either regular or um, singular we can consider the sequence of tangent spaces uh, defined by that sequence of points and then what we wanted is to consider all limits of this sequence of tangent spaces right so when we consider this space given by a point of our space either singular or regular and all these limits of sequence of tangent spaces then what we have is the Nash modification of our space x right so uh, over here, I have this diagram. This diagram is very important for us, and we should uh, keep that diagram in mind in order to follow the other constructs that we are going to make. So we have our space X. Let me to go on, on this diagram with you. So we have our space X uh, with ambient space U, and then we are considering this Nash modification that I'm denoting by X tilde. And our X tilde lives on this space U um, uh, times this Grassmannian manifold. So here we have each point of X. Remember, the, the, uh, the definition is each point of X with sequence of limits of tangent spaces. With limits of sequence of tangent spaces, right? So this is what we have. This is like the ambient space of the Nash modification. And then we are considering the tautological bundle over U, and uh, if we restrict each, if we restrict this tautological bundle to X tilde, we have T tilde. This is kind of a, it's just a, the restriction of this tautological bundle. And over here we have uh, this map, which is just the, the projection on U, and V is a biolomer, biholomorphism out of the singular part of X. And we have uh, this map between the Nash modification and X. So the, the definition that I'm showing you now is the definition of the local Euler obstruction. So we take a radial vector field over X intercepted by a sphere, a small sphere. 
And then using this map, we can consider um, the, in, the, the lift of this uh, vector field on the Nash multiplication. And this is a section of the Nash bundle. The Nash bundle is this bundle given by the restriction of the tautological bundle, right? And then with using obstruction theory, we can compute how hard it is to extend this um, vector field, this lifting of the vector field uh, over here from the sphere into the ball, right? So the, the, the obstruction to do that is what is called the, the local obstruction of our space X, all right? This extension, of course, we can do it by uh, uh, changing to zero of the all of those uh, vectors inside the ball, but we want to do that as a non-zero section of the, the the Nash bundle, right? So this is an important thing to 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 mention. And I think uh, we are not going to make an example of that, of that, but I think I can convince you that this is not an easy thing to do. This is not an easy thing to compute. So many authors have given another uh, a lot of uh, formulas and ways to compute this this local obstruction because it is important in order to understand the singularities of our space X. So uh, what I'm going to show you now is uh, a formula given by Brasilele and Seadi uh, in order to compute the local obstruction. All right. For that, something that is going to appear is a generic linear form. And let me fix, let me say to you what is uh, uh, generic for us. So if you consider a linear map, a linear function actually, and it is true that you, we, get, we have a, as, a risk, as a risky open set uh, in the space of all linear forms that satisfies this two conditions. I'm going to focus on this first one. So if you have, for each point of X, either singular or regular, the hyperplane given by the inverse image of zero of L, which is our linear form, is transversal to every limit of sequence of tangent spaces on regular points of X. So we take a sequence of regular points, converging to a point either singular or regular, and then this sequence of regular points defines a sequence of tangent spaces. And then what we want is that our the, the inverse image of zero by L is um, transversal to this limit of tangent spaces, all right? So there is this very big uh, set that satisfies this condition, all right? So using this uh, um, notion of generosity, what uh, Brasilele and Sadi proved is that we can uh, use this formula to compute the local obstruction. So what we do is to uh, cut, intercept each strata of a witness stratification by the inverse image of L of a regular value. And we should compute this, this other characteristic, all right, in a, in, in a small ball. And we weight this other characteristic with the local obstruction of X at, a, at each point of our, of, of our witness stratification, all right? It is true that the, width, the local obstruction is constant on each uh, strata of, that strat of a witness stratification. So this is why we denote like this, the other obstruction over here. We are choosing a point of that strata to compute it. All right, so, okay, this is a very nice formula. And this, that construction that we made to, to define the, the Euler, the local obstruction, do you remember the diagram where we have the, the, our variety, the Nash modification and so on? So using, we, we, using a, a diagram like that, but not using a radial vector field, using uh, and a specific vector field, which is, which is um, uh, related to, to a, a certain function I'm going to show you, 
we can make that construction and another invariant would appear. So if you take that diagram and then we use the radial vector fields and make all the, that constructions, we can um, define the local Euler obstruction. Local Euler obstruction, yes. And if we take a specific vector field associated to a function, another invariant ap yep, appears. So I say the same thing two, two times, but okay. Uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, so we are going to do that and another invariant would appear. This function should be a function with isolated singularity at the origin defined on over our space X. And then the invariant that appears is the Euler obstruction of the function. And uh, who made that uh, construction, who made all of that topological construction was Brasile Masse Paramzonensiadi, which this is the, the reference, right? So they made that construction, they found out this new invariant, and plus, in, uh, more than that, they did, uh, they compared this new invariant with the local Euler obstruction. So they found out that this new invariant is the local Euler obstruction minus this summatory over here, all right? What we have here is, uh, remember, our witness stratification, we are fixing a witness stratification, and we compute the other characteristic of the fiber of F, the fiber because we are looking at the inverse mage of delta by F, a regular value delta, uh, in each one of those strata uh, in a small ball, right? So we weighted with the local obstruction at a point of our stratum, and this is the relation we have, all right? In this, um, in the same paper, Okay. Before, before. Okay. Like I was, I'm, I was going to to move to the non-isolated singularity case, but I, still, let me just uh, say some some other things about the Euler obstruction of a function. The thing is, we were studying the local Euler obstruction associated to a complex analytic space. All right. Then we joined this function with isolated singularity, and then we found out this relation between these two very important invariants. All right. But there's another thing. We could compare the Euler obstruction of a function with the information of our space X. But more than that, this invariant that appeared over here is a generalization of the Milner number. Because the Milner number is, is defined when we have a function with isolated singularity, but defined on CM, right? But if we have a function defined on X, uh, a singular space, the, we cannot uh, use the, the usual, the, the classical uh, definition of the Milner number. But the Euler restriction of function is a, a generalization of the number. And a way to, to show you that, I could make an example take a function, define on CN, and uh, uh, compute using the formula that we just saw. We can see that up to signal, in that case, the Euler restriction of a function is the middle number. But more than that, I'm going to show you that the Euler restriction of a function, not me, but <laughs> the authors that proved that, which was um, Sadity, Baron, Verjovic, they proved that uh, the Euler restriction of a function is also up to signal uh, a number of more critical points. For that, let me just um, define for you what is a more stratified uh, function because we know what is what is the a Morse function when we are looking at a function in CN, but we should uh, adapt to that the definition in the case that we have a stratified space, right? So we took this function. Uh, uh, defining on our space X and it is more stratified if when you look at f restricted to the strata of v0, and v0 has dimension but more or equal to one, then this uh, restriction has a Mars point at zero, and zero is a generic point of f with respect to each one of those strata. That means that what is being generic point with respect to a strata? So we take a sequence of points in the strata vi for each i, we take a sequence of points in VI converging to zero, and then we should have this transversality condition 
to the to the limit of sequence of tangent spaces all right so this is the generosity uh, comes from that um, notion of generosity that i show you in the beginning of the presentation I, I i think you might remember if not we can go back there you should you can just interrupt me all right so okay uh uh a stratified modification once we know what is more stratified we can understand what is um, stratified modification, which is a deformation that is more stratified, all right? A deformation that satisfies, a deformation of F, of course, that satisfies this condition, all right? So what um, uh, Tzad Chibar and Verzovic, sorry, <laughs> proved was that the only obstruction of a function is up to signal and the number of Morse points of a stratified modification of F appearing in the regular part of X. The regular part of X for, is actually the, the, the bigger strata, right? So the bigger strata of the witness stratification we are taking, all right? So uh, this is a pretty good uh, invariant, uh, a very nice um, construction that the, the those four authors made and that uh, was a type of generalization of the local obstruction both with the the Milner number right okay okay so now let us let's move on to the non-isolated case so in that paper where Brasile Massey Paramizona and Saadji made that construction with a specified uh, radio uh, specified vector field where we got the euler obstruction of a function, they proved that the euler obstruction of a function is computed like this, right? They made the construction, but they also proved this formula. Oh, all right. And the thing is, if we move on to the non-isolated singularity case, that construction they made does not apply. But the formula they, they proved that uh, the euler obstruction of a function satisfies can this, um, this difference of numbers can be computed even if we have non-isolated singularities, all right? So uh, they, can, they can define, use this difference to define a certain number, a certain invariant in the non-isolated singularity case. And this is what they do. So the Milner defect is this difference when um, even when f has non-isolated singularity all right very good the thing is that uh, another two other authors studied only this summatory all right and these two other authors are were my advisors during my phd they were Nicola Duterte and Nicola Duterte. I think Nicola is here. I'm very happy that you're here, Nicola. And um, they used that summatory. They, they choose to study that summatory and they defined the Brasilian number to be the summatory. You know, this is something I changed today. Um, this is the first lecture that I do not go on to the good stratification thing. I always uh start uh talking about the good stratification and it is true to define the brazilian number we should uh, we need to get this good stratification of x which is a witness stratification out of the zeros of f with the af tom condition being satisfied between um strata in the zeros of f and out of, out of the zeros of f f is our function right but the thing is that if we have a witness stratification, this witness stratification is a good stratification with respect to a function, right? So I'm not going on the good stratification today because we can we do we can compute the Brasilian number using a witness stratification. This is true, uh, and if it if necessary, we go back and if you want to, I can show you precisely the definition and everything else. But uh, this is something else for me because I always talk about the good stratification. Uh, all right. So the Brasilian number is this summatory. So over here, 
we have uh, VI being the, the strata out of the zeros of F, so is a Whitney strata, all right? Uh, we have the fiber of F, so this is kind of, we are looking at the fiber strata by strata of our function F. And here we have the oil, local oil obstruction. So it's pretty much the summatory you saw in the last problem, all right? Very good. Fine. So we had, this is a first part. If you saw me in the workshop, this was something I told you about already. And now you're going to this other part talking about the Sharon obstruction. You know, that construction we made, we made, um, not we, but uh, the authors, <laughs> the construction they made was always using that diagram of the Nash, the, the Nash bundle, the Nash modification of, and everything else. And they use um, vector fields, all right? If we move on to one forms, one financial forms, uh, we have other information and uh, new invariants, new invariants come to appear. And this is what Ebeli and Gusenzaj made, and they uh, showed up, they show us this channel of obstruction, all right? So we do need, uh, we are going to go on all that construction again, not with the details, but we are going on on that construction, but using one differential forms, all right? So in the in the end, you're going to, to, to see how these two things are connected. And this is what the, the work uh, is about. It's about when we look these two uh, types of um, constructions, what can you say about the invariance that appears in these two constructions? All right. So let's go to, to the certain obstruction. Uh, so we are looking at a collection of one differential forms. Over here, we have a lot of technical uh, index, index um, conditions. Uh, so I'm not going on that. This is not, uh, of course, to study and prove things. You should go to, on these details, but to to uh, advertise about the work, I don't think we should uh, focus on that that kind of stuff. All right. The thing is, D is the dimension of the space we are going to work on. This is true, and we do need some type of um, this index condition. But I should say you say to you that we have this collection. We can take the collections you want, and ki, ki is something you can adjust. So we have these collections, and we have the dimension of your space. We, you can choose ki to in order in order to to make things work. All right, make this condition work. And this is not uh, in general true. This is something that. Uh, Ebony and Gusenzadi worked a lot to, to provide for us, right? So this is important to say also, right? Okay. And we are going to define the locus of this of a collection, the locus of a sub-collection of the collection we, we choose in the beginning. And here I should make you um, follow the thing, the, 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 follow, the follow thing is that we are defining a type of singularity, all right? So we are, we are trying to understand the singularity of a collection of forms. This is what we are going to do. And that it will be described in, uh, in terms of uh, linearly dependency, dependence, linear dependency. I think this is the dependency linear, linear dependency, I think. All right, so this is how we are going to do using linear dependency. So, we, we, we say that the locus of this sub-collection is the set of points. All right, so we take a, reg, a sequence of regular points. You should remember, this is, it's always this kind of the same spirit of construction. So we take the sequence of regular points converted to a point, either singular or regular, right? And we should have, we have this sequence of, regular points define a sequence of tangent spaces that has a limit in the Grassmannian manifold, in the, uh, some Grassmannian manifold. And um, when we restrict our, our forms, our one differential forms to that limit, we should have linear dependency. 
Is that clear? Maybe I, should, I, I, I use too many words to, to speak to, to explain something simple, but I think it's clear, right? So uh, this is what is the locus of the subcollection of, of a collection of one financial forms. And a special point, which is kind of our singularity, so a special point in that collection, um, a point is a special point of the collection if he, it is in the lossy of the subcollections of our space. So over here, it's, it's a lot of um, a lot of technicalities, but we define the locus for a fixed E. And we say that a point, we say that a point is special if it is in the locus of all of our collections. So we have like uh, omega one, omega two, so two collections of of one differential forms and our point would be special uh, with respect to that collection if it is in the locus of the uh, omega one and omega two uh, collections all right so it's so strange because we uh, we've done this this um let me say um online thing and then we go back to the presidential thing where you can see people and now i cannot see anyone anybody but i think everything is going to is, is everything is going fine right i hope so oh god okay so and very well we know what is the special point we know what is the singularity for us right this is a the the important thing is to understand why I, we are talking about this special point it is because that is uh the the notion of singularity we are giving in this uh in this setting all right and i'm pretty upset because it's free title here i'm so sorry but okay so we have this collection of germs of one farms defined on our x and we are going back to that construction that diagram all right so we have the nash modification x tilde the definition is the same all right and we do have our Nash bundle. And for each one of our uh, of our one form, we can make the same construction. We look at this one form over X, and then we can lift this one form to the Nash modification. And for each one of that, since we, we do not have one differential form, we have a collection of differential forms. So the only the Nash bundle is not enough for us. We should get this, this construction. We should get this sum, this direct sum of, of bundles. And T tilde like this is how we are going to denote this sum, all right? So this T tilde over here are copies of the dual Nash bundle. It is the same bundle, the bundle we saw there, but in the dual form, because we are looking at uh, in the, in the one differential forms um, construction, right? So it is the dual Nash bundle. And we will denote by, T, by D, the set of pairs where we have a point in the Nash modification and the second intricacy would be the collection of one forms like this, which are linear dependent, right? And we can understand why we are looking at things like that because the points where we have this linear dependency are the points is are the are the points where we can may we may have the special point. All right, very well. So. If zero is a special point of the collection, uh, of this collection, the Chern obstruction will be the obstruction to extend uh, this section, omega, uh, gamma omega, of this fiber bundle. Obs uh, observe that we have our bundle, which is that sum of copies of Nash bundles, and we are. Um, cutting out this set of pairs where we might have our special point, right? And we are going to extend this, this section from the sphere. We are, the, the construction is the same, like I said. So from the sphere into the ball. And then the obstruction to do that is the certain obstruction, all right? Very 
very good. Another definition I want to I want to talk about is the Euler abstraction of a map. We saw the Euler abstraction of a function before. Now you're going to see the Euler abstraction of a map. So we take uh, a function defined on a complex variety x, all right? And we take as our first collection the differential of h1 of this of these inferences of f, right? The f1 until the fp. And omega 2 will be a generic collection in such a way that 0 is a special point of this collection. So this is a pretty pretty strong thing to, to, to ask. And this is something proved that we can do that in uh, because of the all the work of Ebeli and Guzazadi in this matter, all right? So this is not something that always happens, right? So this is not something um, unreasonable to, to ask. This is something uh, coming from the work of Ebeli and Guzazadi. This is pretty important, right? So we can consider omega one to be the differential, all right? And then we can choose our omega two as as a generic collection. So this generic collection should exist, right? And this is what Emily has already proved. So omega for us, our collection, that omega um, ij, that was this uh, thing we were talking about in the previous slide, uh, would be only these two um, differential forms, all right? And the honor obstruction of the map f will be the Chern obstruction of omega. So we can we define the Chern obstruction for a collection of forms. And in the case that we have omega 1 to be the difference of uh, the differentials of f, then we can define this new invariant, which is the Euler obstruction of the map f. All right. So what? <laughs> so we talk about a lot of stuff, right? But uh, I think in the before uh, talking about the channel obstruction, I told you what I wanted to do, right? What we wanted to do was to find um, a relation between uh, the invariants we had uh, where we working with, with functions and what we have when we're working with uh, applications, right? With maps. So, all right. So we are considering our function f, given by f1, f2, only with two entries, right? And I'm taking this good stratification of x relative to f, f2. So one of, we are um, uh, we're stratifying our space with respect to one of our uh, functions. And I, I even put the here, put here that which always exists, right? And I, I, we talk about it all right, already. And we are considering these collections of one forms where the first one is the df1, df2, just like in the definition of the Euler obstruction of a map. And omega2 is this um, generic collection. Over here, I already put uh, uh, how many interests I would, uh, I wanted. And this many interests, this many generic linear forms are due sorry, are due to uh, Ebeli and Guzenzadi work, all right? So they, using the other index conditions that they put and they and what they proved, we know that if we have only two indices here, we should have D indices over here in the generic collection, all right? So the first thing we should do is uh, the key theorem in my, this is my point of view, of course, the key uh, argument of our work was to to find is this theorem, which shows us how can we relate all the constructions we, we saw until the definition of the Brasley number and the construction that Emily and Guzazaj made with uh, the Chern obstruction. All right, and what we have is that if uh, we have f one f one to be tractable at the origin. And I'm going to explain what it, what that means with respect to this good stratification relative to F2. So this is stratification. Just uh, remind that, keep in mind that V would be a witness stratification. Uh, and then we can refine in order to be, um, 
to be a good stratification of F, which is essentially, I'm going to repeat that, right? Uh, is essentially we looking at as of uh, we are looking at the space out of the zeros of F, and we have this Whitney condition, all right? And when we, we have this chi, this AF Tom condition between the fibers of F, this is what a good stratification means. And what we prove is that the Euler obstruction of the map F over the fiber of the function F2 is equal the number of Morse points of amorcification of F1 in the fiber of F2. All of that appearing in this in this space. Of course, we we have our space and then we cut with the fiber of F2. This is true. And then we look everything in this fiber. All right. So we look at the at the oil obstruction of the map F in the fiber. And this is the number of Mars critical points of amorcification of a stratified amorcification of F1 restricted to the fiber. All right. And let me say what is tractable. All right. So I should, I don't think I can, I don't think I can write over here, but the, the tractability thing, what we needed is that a way to control how the singularities of F1 and F2 behave with respect to each other. So the tractability would say that if you look at F1 and F2, at this pair, which is our map F, right? If you look at our map F, and then we restrict to each strata of that Whitney stratification we started with, then this critical set, the closure actually, the closure of that critical set should be of dimension at most one, right? So we, we are looking at this, uh, this type of functions. And something is very important here. We look at this map F restricted to this stratum, and we look at that critical points, but we take off all the components that are in uh, the zeros of F1 and the zeros of F2, all right? So this is something important because if we do not take out these components, then we are restricting the, the, the size of the singularities, the size of the singular set of F1 and F2, and this is not what we want, all right? We, what we want is to uh, be free with respect to the, the size of the singular set of F1 and F2. We just want to control the singularities of the map F, all right? So this is what we show. If we have this equality, this is, uh, for me, this is the key theorem of the, the work then we can use this formula proved by uh, Professor Ni uh, Nicola and Nivaldo, because they proved that if we have a function which is prepolar with respect to the good stratification of x relative to f, then this difference between Brazilian numbers is a number, the number of Mars critical points of amorcification of G on the fiber of F. This is pretty important also. Let me talk about it, about it a little bit. The thing is, we look, let, just to, uh, to make it clear, the, what is this NQ over here? We look at this stratification on the fiber of F. So we are out of the zeros of F. That means that we have Whitney strata right? Whitney regularity of, over those strata. And then we look at the top stratum, so the strata of bigger dimension. And we restrict G to that fiber, to that stratum, and we make a morsification, so G would be, would only have uh, Mars critical points. And we count how many of those points are in the bigger strata, all right? So this is the number and Q that appears over here. And let me go on a little bit over this difference over here. The Brazil number, okay, we, we saw the, the definition, but over here appears this, this term, we, uh, this popular term that I should uh, explain what, meant, what means. We look at G 
restricted to each one of those strata of our stratification, and that needs to be only the origin. All right, so this is a very uh, isolated singularity function. All right, um, I mean this is a, a G is has isolated singularity in the stratified sense. When we restrict to each strata, we get isolated singularity. All right. So when we make the difference, we have this number, and this number of Morse critical points is precisely the number that appeared in our uh, in this other theorem, right? So this is why I, I see this theorem as the key of our work, because if we have this relation and we have this formula, then of course we have this connection between the Bertelian number and the Euler restriction of the map F. The only thing we need is, uh, to the, is to choose the right type of functions, right? So, okay, this is what we have, fine. And as an application of our work, we have the following. So if we take the function, a perturbation of the function F1, remember we have this map F1, F2, right? And we make this perturbation, uh, we make this sum with a power, a very big power of F2. And F2 here is, uh, has isolated singularity at the origin, right? Uh, so I think I should mention over here that the relation with the key ingredient for our uh, work uh, is, oh, is was proved for F1 to be tractable, which is weaker than being prepolar, because prepolar means that we have this isolated singularity in the stratified sense, and the tractability thing does not uh, imply that, right? So uh, over here, the, it, we enunciate this relation with F1 being prepolar, but uh, the key ingredient is stronger, right? And over here, we have this application in the case that F1 is prepolar, it's still, right? So uh, we want to compare the Euler obstruction of the map F given by F1, F2, which the, the, the map we begin with, and F tilde, where F1 tilde, the first interest, is given by this perturbation of F1. And then when we have this type of uh, things, we can find a type of Leomjin uh, formulas. I did not work on, uh, did not talk about uh, the Leomjin formulas. This is true, but the, essentially what we have is we have a lot of ingredients and a lot of uh, ways, not easy, easy ways, but we have a, um, tools to compute uh, the invariance of functions with isolated singularity. And uh, the Leomjin, um, approach is that we have non-isolated singularities, all right, and then we try to cut or to deform these functions with non-isolated singularities into functions with isolated singularities. And our way to do that is making this type of perturbations. And then if you do, of course, it should be a, a perturbation that you can work on, work with, right? And this is what Lei and Eugene made, and Masse has a beautiful work about it. And even to bar, we have a, a, a pretty, uh, an awesome <laughs> view the composition for functions with, with a one dimensional critical set even. And uh, okay, using this type of perturbation, we can, we get to, to compute, in, to, we get to get informations of our functions with no isolated singularities using the tools of functions with isolated singularities. So this is pretty awesome. And this is what we did here. So we can compute the Euler obstruction of the map F tilde uh, with using, oh, sorry, sorry, we can compute the Euler obstruction of the map F using informations of the Euler obstruction of the map F tilde, which has isolated singularities, right? And the the difference between these two is this information over here and i uh, uh, didn't put it 
here, but uh, BJ over over here are the the branches of uh, of the singular set of F1. So for us, F1 does not have isolated singularity, right? It has a one-dimensional critical set. This one-dimensional critical set is written as a union of branches, and these are the branches that appears over here, all right? And over here, we have the Euler abstraction of the function F1, that one that we saw in the beginning of the presentation, and MF to bj this number which is pretty uh heavy um, notations and i'm sorry about it but over here what we have is only the multiplicity of that branch all right so we look at that branch and then it cut with an uh, inverse mate of delta by f2 which is which is another function and then we count how many points we have over, over there which is only the the multiplicity of that of that branch uh, with respect to F2, right? And this is uh, an application of our of our theorem of the things we've made to obtain this type of Leon gene formula, right? And this is it. Thank you very much.